Take your Bibles this morning and turn to Romans chapter 13, one verse. It's a preacher, this is going to be a short message today, one verse. Well, you can get a lot out of one verse. But Romans chapter 13, verse 7. It says, render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to them whom honor. You know, yesterday, and we celebrate it the whole weekend, but yesterday was Veterans Day, and usually I try to do a Veterans Day service. The closest Sunday to Veterans Day. Well, you can't get any closer than yesterday was Veterans Day, so uh, we're going to uh, talk about Veterans Day today and what the theme about Veterans Day. Uh, a lot of veterans, a lot of patri patriots. I saw a lot of things yesterday going on as I was out riding. I saw probably it was probably 20 or 30 Jeeps and had flags on both sides of them honoring the veterans. I saw motorcycles with flags, even as ugly a day as it was, they're going to still ride. And we've come a long ways since World War I. There's a long line of veterans, there's a long line of patriots that helped build this country. They used to call it Armistice Day. But what they started when they started was honoring all the World War I veterans on uh, May the 13th, 1938. Uh, they said, we're going to make the 11th of November each year and make it a legal holiday. And this holiday is going to be dedicated to the cause of world peace and also be dedicated to the ones that have served their country. Uh, it was set aside to order to, to honor the veterans of World War I. Well, since then, we've had several wars and skirmishes that we've been in, uh, and so they changed it from Armistice Day to Veterans Day in 1954 after World War II. So that's a little bit of history on Veterans Day, but uh, what is a veteran? What is a veteran? You know, we have two days, and sometimes we get them mixed up. We have Memorial Day. We remember all that did, all that paid their lives. And Veterans Day, we remember all the ones that served their country, uh, dead or alive. You know, uh, just like my daddy, he served in World War II, but we're still honoring him today because he was a veteran. But uh, what is a veteran? Someone wrote one time, says, uh, it is the veteran not the preacher who has given us freedom of religion. It is the veteran and not the reporter who has given us freedom of the press. It is the veteran and not the poet who has given us the freedom of speech. It is the veteran, not the campus organizer who has given us freedom to assemble. It is the veteran and not the lawyer who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is the veteran and not the politician who has given us the right to vote. It is the veteran who salutes the flag, who serves under the flag. I can go back and look at some of these things in the world that we live in today, and somebody wants to take all those away from us. Even in the country we live in, the worst thing I heard about yesterday was the protesters protesting in one of our big cities, and on Veterans Day, they set the American flag on fire. Uh, I, I don't like it. I'm your preacher. I'm supposed to preach love, but I'm also supposed to preach the truth. And the truth is, if we don't do something, it's going to get worse. Um, I saw this little thing with a man leaning on a shovel, and it says, God is in control. And we all know that. But he doesn't expect you to lean on the shovel and pray for a hole. He expects you to do something. That's what our veterans did. Our veterans, some of them gave their lives. We have now what they call the Veteran of Foreign Wars. Uh, we got the VSW. Uh, but what do we do? We follow the lead of God, and God's the warrior. God is in control. God is the one that engages the enemy, and we're not the enemy. 
But you know, our Lord tells us he'll fight our battles for us. But like I said, he don't expect you to lean on the shovel and pray for a hole. You have to fight sometimes. You have to fight for your rights. You have to fight for your freedoms. And this is what our veterans have done. And the world we live in today, uh, even right here in the United States, there's things happening today that I said I could go in that first thing and see what we're about to lose. Uh, it's the veteran, not the preacher, who has given us freedom of religion. They took that word, freedom of religion, and really just messed it up. When the United States first started, they left to come over here to have the right to their religion, to have a right to preach. And then politics got in on it. And then veterans, it's the veteran and not the reporter who gives us the freedom of press. What is freedom of press today in the world that we live in? And then it's the veteran and not the poet that gives us freedom of speech. Do you have freedom of speech this morning? No, you, if you're a Christian this morning, you're a hater. Did you know that? They think you hate everything. But we don't. We love everything. They look at us in the perspective that they have been taught. But we are of God, from God, and for God. The greatest veteran that ever lived fought all our wars for us. He fought the biggest war of all was when he went up on the cross and he took all the sin of the whole world, took everything upon himself, and he died. He was not only a veteran. He's one we remember on Memorial Day also. But we should remember him every day. If it weren't for Jesus Christ, you wouldn't be able to be sitting where you are today. You wouldn't have that freedom to come into this church and listen to the word of God. It's coming that one day you're not going to be able to do that. I think we're going to be gone by then. I think when Israel signs their peace treaty, and you have to be at war before you have peace, when they sign that peace treaty, put their signature on there to rapture, we're not even going to see them do that. We're going to be raptured out of here. We don't have to stay around for the three and a half years of what they're going to call peace. You know, everybody prays for peace. And I always tell them it's not going to happen yet. Real peace is going to come after the seven-year tribulation when Jesus comes back, puts his feet on the Mount of Olives, and he's here for a thousand years to rule and reign over this whole world, what God gave him, and there's going to be peace. Amen. There's going to be peace like there's never been before. We've got the right today to come in here and assemble together. That can be taken away this week if they wanted to they may send you a letter or put a national news thing say you can't go to church next sunday if you go to church next sunday you'll be arrested if i stand up as a preacher next sunday and preach i could be arrested bring me three meals to the prison make sure i get some chocolate candy bars and and twinkies i love my twinkies so if your preacher gets arrested first please bring me some twinkies because i'm not going to quit what i'm doing I'm going to stand up for our rights, the freedom of religion, to be able to tell you about what everybody should hear about, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You need to know who Jesus is. I don't need for a lawyer to tell me I have to have a fair trial, but we've got that right today. Do we? Do we have fair trials today? They so much dishonor. They so much lies in the world today that uh, sometimes I challenge those comments about uh, having the freedom of a fair trial. Churches today, we put God on display. This is where God is displayed. This is where God sent you this morning. This is a peaceful place. This is where you come in out of the world. You come into God's house to hear God's word. If you've had a bad week this week, you come to church, to hear God's word, to hear how God cares about you, to hear how God wants you to be more like his son, Jesus. God says, I sent my son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. He sent Jesus here, and Jesus walked a perfect life. Don't ever let anybody tell you anything else. Don't read the book if it says in there that Jesus did this or that and it was a sin. Don't read the book, throw it away, because Jesus walked a perfect life. He was tempted three times by the devil, 
and he won all three times. The devil knew what he was doing, but Jesus showed us what we're supposed to do. We have a lot of challenges today in the churches. In our churches today, uh, we display God's power. This is what we come for, and then people try to take it away from you. People try to tell you you're wrong. Uh, God also trains us for war. Do you know that? Blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. He is my steadfast love and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield, and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. You'll find that in the book of Psalms chapter 144. God is in control. God takes care of us. We don't need other people to tell us what to do. We need to start listening more to what God tells us to do. And it's all in his book. We need to pick up his book more often. But today we celebrate Jesus dying on the cross for us. But we also celebrate these veterans, these people that have given their life, they've given their time to their country. You know, we're blessed to live in the United States. We're blessed to be here, to, to know how this United States of America started and who's in control. We take these veterans and we kind of just have to stand on their shoulders, don't we? They made it all possible. They are giants in our life. They willingly, some of them, some of them got drafted. And they didn't willingly go, but they willingly stepped into the line of fire. They sacrificed a lot of things for their comfort. They left their home to go overseas and fight a war for your freedom. And a lot of people will argue with me about that. It didn't have anything to do with our freedom. Yes, it did. It's got a lot to do with our freedom. If you don't believe it, look around the United States today. You're losing your freedom because we've let so many outsiders come in and then go to their religions and their way of life until I never thought I would see the day that they were marching on the streets in America and protesting Israel when my Bible says, I will bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. And we live in that time today. We live in a time today where we're seeing prophecy take place. That should make you smile. Why do I say that? Because we know how it ends. We know how it's going to end. No matter how bad it gets today, we still know what the end is and how it's going to be. But we come this morning thanking those warriors that have fought a war. I will never forget, and I was part of the Vietnam conflict, and I won't never forget what it was like when those Soldiers came home to nothing. People hated them. People shunned them. People wouldn't help them do anything. And now we got more veterans on the street today that are wounded. You know, they got wounded in war, lost limbs, and the government won't even give them the money. But they give it to somebody that comes in here that hadn't done anything for this country. They bring them in. You know what they bring them in for? And I'm not politic in this morning. Bring them in for votes. They let them in for votes. Give them everything they want. All you got to do is vote for me. But John, Joseph Addison made a comment. He said, courage that grows from the Constitution often forsakes a man when he has occasion for it. He said, courage which arises from a sense of duty acts in a uniform matter. These men went to service because they had a duty. wonder how many people would volunteer today if it got so bad that we needed volunteers to fight for our own country. I think it would surprise you uh, even if you put the draft back in and started drafting people. Uh, we used to call them draft dodgers. They'd be more today than there's ever been. They don't want to fight for our freedom. They're already free. They already get everything free. That's their freedom. But because of these veterans and what they did and through Jesus Christ and what he did, we are free today through the blood of Jesus Christ. And these men knew that also. They sacrificed a lot of things. 
A lot of them fought under Christ's banner of love. They served their nation with valor, selflessness. And we don't have that today. We don't have selflessness today. We have selfishness. But we, we stand on the shoulder of these giants this morning because they did sacrifice. And they did it so we could have peace. They did it so that we could have freedom. Jesus did it so that we could have eternal life. Beat that. Nobody else can give you that. Nobody else can promise you eternal life. Everybody else can promise you you're going to die. But Jesus promises you eternal life. It's a freedom that we have today. So we're here this morning to recognize the service of our, and honor these heroes and salute the sacrifices that they made. When we look at that scripture this morning, 13.7, it says, Give to everyone what you owe them. Today we owe them love. We owe them anything it takes to pay them back for the sacrifices that they made. It says, Then revenue. It says respect. We need to respect these people. And it says that we need to honor them. And that's what we do this weekend. We're honoring all the veterans. Sounds simple, don't it? When you have protesting in the streets burning the American flag, it's, it's not simple anymore. Then you go back and you look at Scripture. The Apostle Paul in this letter to Romans He's teaching us about our obligations. This is what you're supposed to do. He's telling us that we have a duty to give to everyone what we owe them. That includes taxes. He said taxes, revenue, respect, and honor. What does that mean for us today? First, we need to understand that our veterans have given us something. They did give us something, and we can't repay them. There's nothing we can do today to repay them for what they did for this country because they gave us freedom. And people don't understand what a country is where you're not free. I think we should start getting bus loads and send them to these countries that are not free, let them protest and find out, and then when they come back here, we let them back in. When they come back here, I guarantee you there'll be different people and well, think about what freedom really is. It's a debt that we can never repay these veterans, but we can honor them, can't we? We can honor them this weekend, honor these veterans. We can express our gratitude. The second thing, we need to recognize that our veterans have not only given us our freedom, but they have also shown us what it means to live a life of service. They have shown us what it means to, to, to put others before themselves. They're over there fighting for you, 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 everybody. So they've shown us what it means to sacrifice for the greater good, something that is better. Jesus did that, didn't he? He sacrificed for the greater good. What can we learn from it? We can learn to take these things and apply them to our own lives. Thirdly, we need to remember our veterans are not just heroes on the battlefield. They're also heroes in our community. They're our neighbors. They're our friends. They're our family members. And they continue to serve even after they come back home. They're still serving. Even after their military service is ended, they still are proud of their country and proud of their church. They're proud of this freedom that we have. And they continue to make a difference in all of our lives. That's something we can always strive to. I want to be like that. I want to be like them. And then lastly, we understand that honoring our veterans is not just about what we say, but about what we do. You know, a lot of times we say a whole lot of things and we don't do it. But what can we do? It's about how we live our lives. We can appreciate what they've done. Instead of putting them down, downgrading them, and saying you shouldn't be fighting these wars because it don't have anything to do with it. It has everything to do with you and your freedoms. It teaches us, as Jesus taught us, that we are to love one another. 
love one another. So today we honor those heroes. We think about these people, what they sacrificed. But the debt that we owe our veterans today goes beyond the freedoms that we enjoy. What did Paul tell the Romans? That they deserve respect. They deserve respect. And this is not just about saying thank you for what you've done. You know, I've had people tell me that this week. I put mine and Tony and LeBond's picture on there in their military uniforms. And everybody says, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. That's appreciated too, but this is not just about saying thank you on Veterans Day. It's about showing the veterans respect. It's about showing them honor and glory on their everyday lives. It's about recognizing, looking at that person and saying, I know you made a sacrifice. You left your home. I remember my uncle, I won't never forget it. He come out of the tobacco patch, that last road that he cropped, and put it in the truck, and he said, I'll see y'all later. I'm going to serve my country. And he went into the military. He was a Green Beret. Stayed in it over 30 years and got as high as you can get as far as being honored, you know, with your rank. He couldn't have gone any higher in his enlisted rank. He could have been an officer. He didn't want to do that. He just wanted to be a Green Beret. He left the military as a sergeant major. That's as high as you can get. He served two stints in Vietnam. One of them he served, he was supposed to come where I was at in Japan. In 1969, he was coming on R&R &R to see me in Japan. And he got wounded. And that got canceled. But he was proud to have fought for his country. And yes, he had people all around him that died for their country. He knows how to respect those people. He's got a great respect for soldiers today because of what he saw happen. The word honor in Revelation 13.7 it means to value or respect people that have served. They used the same word in 1 Timothy 5, 17 when Paul writes, he said, the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those who work its preachings and its teachings. Honor. It carries a great big idea of showing the value and respect that we should be given to others that have served our country. We should salute the sacrifices that they made. And they did make sacrifices because they left home. They left a place where they won't any war. They left a place where you had the freedom of all these things I read. And this was about 40 years ago or 50 years ago. <clears throat> Slowly we losing those by not paying this respect, but they had to leave what they were doing. <clears throat> to me, it was an act of them giving their time, giving their self, making a difference in the world that we live in today about stepping up without stepping back. That's what veterans do. They sacrifice a lot. Physical sacrifice, harsh conditions that they had to go to. The tobacco patch, according to my uncle, wasn't even a bad place to be, as bad as we used to think it was. But when you're in war, it changes the way you think. Like I said, many suffered injuries, visible and invisible. It's something we need to always do is to honor our veterans. Recognize all these things that they do. It's a testament of strength, the human spirit, the power of faith. You know, those guys went over and, and fought these wars, all these wars, and they had a lot of faith. They had a lot of faith. 
that they were going to come home. That was one thing they always wanted to make sure was when they left here. They, their hope was to come back home. You know, when you take a window seat on an airplane, how many of you in here has never flown in an airplane? Wow, y'all don't know what you're missing. You take a seat on a flight in an airplane, and there are two times that you want to look out the window. You want to look out when you're taking off, and you want to look out when you're landing. But uh, I learned that I love to look out all the time because the clouds were above me, and when the plane takes off, and you go through those white puffy clouds and you get above them, guess what's up there? Sunshine and blue skies, and you look down below you, and it's so beautiful. God's creation it looks like you could step out of the airplane and just walk on those clouds. One day we're going to be able to do that. But what do you think it looks like from God's perspective? Uh, we take off. We see those things. We go leave a dark overcast, and then next thing you know, sun's shining, but it's still dark down here. No wonder people say behind every dark cloud, the sun's still shining. And guess what it is? It's still shining. When you're 20, 30,000 feet above the ground, and you're looking down, on what's below, I wonder what it looks like from God's perspective. He's in heaven looking down. What kind of view does God have? You know why man needs to pray? Some people say, give me one example of why I need to pray. Because we need to see things the way God sees them. That's the easiest answer that I can give you. Why do we need to pray? Why? Because we only see things from ground level. We live by sight and not by faith. The Bible tells us we should live by faith, don't it? And not by sight. When we pray, we're seeking to understand God's ways and his will and to see things of his perspective. When these veterans were fighting, don't you know there was a lot of praying going on? I went in the middle of Vietnam. I was just a support group in Japan. But those jets would leave every morning, and I would pray that they all come back safely. When you're in a war, there's more prayers sent up to God, and you know how many of them he don't hear? No, he hears every one of them. He hears every prayer that is sent up. You know, the people of Israel prayed to God when they were in captivity, and they were in a foreign land. They had lost their home. They had lost their jobs. And a lot of them had lost their families. Same thing with veterans. When they leave the comfort of the United States and go overseas, one day they're going to have to fight on their own soil. I see it coming. They're not going to have to leave home, but it's still the same thing as war. We read in the Bible, by the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on our poplars we hung our harps, for there on our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded us to sing songs of joy. They said, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Even the captors were asking them to sing songs, happy songs. Sometimes the enemy is not even happy. How can we sing songs of the Lord while we're in a foreign land? When everything's taken away from you, there's one thing that they cannot take from you, and that's hope and a future. God took care of that for you when he sent his son Jesus Christ. He gave us a hope. He gave us a future. And no one, no one can take that away from you. God said to the prophet Jeremiah, I know the plans for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper, not to harm you, and plans to give you hope for a future. 
Wow, the world we live in today, sometimes I just see it falling apart. I see so many countries today protesting Israel, but I see a lot of countries that say, we're standing behind you. The United States at first said we are standing behind you, and now the Secretary of State says we need to kind of back up a little bit. Who's he to tell them and to tell me and you how we feel? I stand behind Israel. I will always stand behind Israel. They are God's people. You're God's people. These churches we're in today want to take and water everything down. We want to make it easy. We want to see we, we, we don't need to be involved in that. We don't need any of that. You need it more than ever. You need to give them your prayers. You need to give them your thoughts. One day every knee will bow down and it won't be to Allah. It'll be to Jesus who made it all possible. So the service of our veterans this morning, including Jesus, I like to say Jesus was a veteran, won't he? It's a testament of strength, the human spirit, and the power of faith. And that's what it takes. And this morning, we honored those people. Most of all this morning, we honor our Lord Jesus Christ because he made the ultimate sacrifice no one else could do. He gave us eternal life if we will only believe. And he taught us how to love one another as he loved us. He taught us how to serve one another. We need to be serving our veterans and patting them on the back. That's what Jesus would want us to do. Think about your freedoms this morning. Think about the week you had this week and you said, I think I'm going to church today because I'm going to feel better if I'm in church. It don't matter how I feel. I'm going to feel better in church than I, than I am at home. And we're here this morning. We're in God's house. We're a place of comfort, a place that we can feel the spirit of God in our hearts. We know he's here with us. But things are going on outside. Let's pray for it. Let us pray. And Father, we're so thankful this morning that we do have our freedoms right on. We have our freedom most of all through Jesus Christ who shed his blood. That we can have the freedom from sin. That we can have the freedom to be able to look forward. To look what our future holds. Even past our future here on earth. We know that we're going into eternity. And Father, we know there's others going into eternity also. Everybody is going into eternity. We just don't vanish and go away. But Father, we have a choice, and you gave us that choice. To either accept your son, Jesus Christ, and spend eternity with Jesus in heaven, or reject Jesus and not believe in Jesus and spend our eternity in hell. It's just a choice we have to make. And it's the only choices we have, no matter what man says, we know what your word says. Father, there be one under, your, under my voice this morning don't know you as their personal Savior. We pray today will be the day that they would give their life and say, yes, I want to be part of Jesus. I want to be part of his, his war. I want to be part of his soldiers. I want to be a warrior for Jesus Christ. Father, help them to make that decision today. Be with us as we continue our service. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your hymn books and turn to page 362. Rescue to perish. Boy, that's just what we talked about, wasn't it? Rescue to perishing. 362. Sing first, second, and last. Altar is open this morning. 